Grumble and Growl on Oria TV. In every consciousness group I started, at least a third of the women had been raped. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that uh, that matches up with national statistics too. That's yep. just horrifying. I mean, so there's three women here, you know, do the math. Um, so when you wrote Woman on the Edge of Time, it had some technology in it, but it was more society forward. You also wrote this fabulous book called He, She, It, which also... He, she, and it. Oh, oh, on my, it doesn't have the and, but he, she, and it. Okay. Um, I, I love that book. These are two of my top five favorite books, by the way. And um, that also examines gender and its role in society, but it's much more technologically forward. How did you come up with the two different ideas for the future? Well, they come from different times. Uh, we weren't worried about global warming and climate, the burning the world up and destroying species and so forth. And plus corporate power. Right. I knew a lot about it then because I did power research with the, I, one of the, I was one of the founders of the North American Congress on Latin America, which still exists. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what we were concerned with then and what everybody was, the, all the movements, I knew people in every movement, in the American, in the, American, the Indian movement. I knew people in uh, the black, the black movement, let I knew people who were in... You were a crossover hit, it sounds like. No, I just knew people because yeah. I, was, I was an active organizer in the regional office of, of Students for Democratic Society. Okay. So people came through there. And we met people from movements in Japan, in Germany, wow. in France, in the never People, everybody came through the New York office. Mm -hmm. So we had a pretty good idea of what was going on internationally. And of course, right. we did liaison with a lot of other groups, with the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. with the Latino groups. So uh, you were aware of all these global issues yeah. probably before the rest of us, and you started putting a picture together. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I borrowed things from all the movements mm -hmm. I was a, that I knew enough about to create a society that I would want to live in. Right. Oh, I love the societies that you that you wrote about. I thought these now, books were just by the time I came to write uh, he, she, and it, corporations had the and the wealthy and the powerful had pushed back a lot. Plus, it became clear that we were headed into burning up the world. I read all. I read. I was a little slow in how fast it would happen. But I was, uh, I read all the scientific literature at the mm -hmm. time. I have a habit of doing that for uh, Moving on the Edge of Time. I have read these fuckers, <laughs> uh, you know, the bottom knee, the oh, bottom knee, oh, all yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah. I read their papers. I can, I can read scientific papers. I like, I, I get, I subscribe to science. Mm -hmm. and, oh, awesome. Yeah, it's one of, I try to keep up with what's going I, on. I keep up by watching TV. <laughs> no, I keep up by reading the... Yeah, that's better. Um, uh, so, what else? Is so, there? which which society, Woman on the Edge of Time or He, She, and It, do you think we're moving towards right now? <laughs> he, She, and It. Yeah. Rather rapidly. Yeah, I think so, too. I would have to agree with you. Oh, my God. Are you working on any projects right now? Of course, I'm always writing poetry and publishing poetry. Poetry is my first love, uh -huh. and I always write poetry. But I I died last year on October 23rd at 7 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad to see you came back. If I didn't come back, the rescue squad saved my life. I don't know everything they did because I wasn't conscious, but I know they gave me oxygen. They did various things. I, woke, I came awake in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was extremely weak for quite a long time. I'm sure. Uh, I was in the hospital for quite a while. They put a pacemaker in, but I, they wouldn't let me go out because I was too weak. Oh. Uh, anyhow, 
what made, oh, so when I came home the very first day, I couldn't do much but lie on the couch, but I went to the computer and started writing. Mm -hmm. uh, I discovered after I've been writing for a while that I was writing in a Japanese form called Sumihitsu. It's a thousand-year-old form that's common in Japan, unknown in the West, essentially. Wow. The Pillow Book was the first book uh -huh. written in that form. I'm it's a very it. fluid form. <clears throat> and I discovered that's what I was doing after I'd been doing it for about a month. I've heard, yeah, that strange things happen sometimes when you have a near-death experience. Yep. People come back speaking different languages, doing different things. I just remember it as being horrible. I drowned in my own body. Oh my goodness, mm. that's sad. That does. I it did, I didn't see any. I have white a fear light. of drowning. I saw black water. Oh goodness, closing over me and then drowning me. Oh my goodness, because I couldn't breathe. Right. Uh, my dad died I, by not being able to breathe. So I wonder if he had the same experience. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh. Basically, it, what I'm working, the, the book, uh, The Hour of My Death, mm. is part narrative, uh, part poetry, part essays. There are essays in it like uh, women's health care, health care of the elderly now, which I've experienced. <laughs> I was developing this for a year, but no doctor paid attention. Right, yeah. I'd say... My ankles are swollen. They'd say, well, put your feet up. I'd say, I get out of breath much quicker. Well, start slow and do more exercise. Uh, then so on and so forth. And they should have been giving you the medicine to... No, well, they should have. I should have gotten the pacemaker Pace, much earlier. Pacemaker earlier, earlier. yeah. Have died. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> not as sorry as I was. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> want our viewers to take away from today's stories um, that you have told like what would you like us to do or some kind of something to think differently about in the world pick out what to work on that moves you when you try to work on issues that don't move you it doesn't work you get burnt out very fast something impinges on you mm -hmm. or the people around you and you want to you want that to change that's what you work on you work on the thing which is most, that makes most a lot oppressive of to yeah. you. Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, there's so many things that need help. I'll never find a place to start. Just pick the one thing that's like poking at you, poking at you, poking at you. Yes. And do that one. Uh, so it's just, that's, that's part of what I want people to take away. And if you don't quite to change it, it will be changed the way you don't want it. That's right. If you... You may hesitate to to make phone calls to mark. I can't march anymore. I've got a bum ankle from the last time I was in Detroit. The last gig I did before COVID. <laughs> I st uh, the grad student who was escorting me across campus at Wayne University said, "What is your writing process?" I turned to look at her as I was stepping off the curb. Oh no! The, and I the the curb was much higher and I landed on a grate and it twisted oh. and I twisted my ankle oh, and goodness. partially tore two, two tendons in my uh, I've I've sprained many an ankle in my day I know it's hard. This wasn't sprained. It was worse than that. It was that. torn. Yeah. Anyhow what made me <laughs> We were talking oh, what do you want people anymore. to do. Yeah, you but can. if you can do it understand that those who are those billionaires that change that are in control of everything now are making a phone call to their banker are making a little phone call to their congressman and their senator and often their president and what you don't do they're doing yes they take the time to make the changes they want if you don't happen to like being pressed down into poverty and losing your middle class income uh, and losing your social security, your Medicaid, your Medicare, if you don't like any of what's happening, if you don't like it, they do and they're making sure more of it continues. They've never given up getting rid of the new Roosevelt's New Deal. 
they have ro already rolled half of it back. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have been aiming for decades to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. They don't want us to have Social Security. If you privatize it, they make money off of it, just like all the horrible health insurance Preach companies. it. Preach it, sister. Mm -hmm. she's, she's correct, and she's saying what I'm saying. Get to work. We don't have time to be sitting around just watching things happen around us. We have to get our feet, our boots on the ground, and start fighting for our rights back so that we can start moving forward again. Marge, thank you so much for being on the show. This was a fantastic interview. Thank you. Okay.